Welcome to the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. A show all about reviewing dinosaurs on a scale of 1 to 10 fossils before only the elite terrible lizards make it into the prehistoric cage match. This program is presented by the Stomp Tromp Roar Company and can be heard within all the rock layers across the planet. Grab your dinosaurs and your official scorecard because it's now time to dig for dinosaurs. Here's your Mesozoic host, Dinosaur Ranger Anthony. Remember the dinosaurs! Remember the dinosaurs! Welcome back, all my junior paleontologists. This is your prehistoric frontiersman, Dinosaur Ranger Anthony. Now, today's episode of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast, we remember all the dinosaurs we lost 65 million years ago at the battle of the KPG extinction. Do you all remember when that ginormous asteroid crashed into the earth? Well, of course not. And that's because we weren't even alive yet. But that still doesn't take away the fact that the dinosaurs once ruled our planet. Now, most people would assume that the dinosaur genus that we're going to take a closer look at today was named after the old Spanish mission or fortress that we call the Alamo. But it was actually named after something completely different. And we'll get more into that in just a few moments. But before we go and grab our coontail hats and go inside the Alamo for today's dinosaur review, let's update you guys on some some dinopreneur news. Now, if you guys can remember from last week's episode all about the Colovasaurus, I announced that my family and I are going down to San Antonio, Texas this weekend. We are so pumped, you guys, so super excited. We're going to have to get up at like 3 in the morning on Thursday so that we can fly down to San Antonio at like 5.40 in the morning, you guys. We got to fly up to Chicago and then we fly down to Texas. That's where our layover is at up in Chicago. It's just so silly that we have to fly north just to go south down to Texas. But nonetheless, you guys, it's going to be so, 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 so much fun. We're going for two main reasons, like I mentioned. First, we're going to go see the one and only Dinosaur George, my dinosaur mentor. And second, we're going to go watch the WWE Royal Rumble, baby. Now, you guys, we're also going to do a bunch of other things. We're taking my two kids, so we got to do some fun kid stuff as well, right? So we're going to go to SeaWorld. We're going to go to the San Antonio Zoo. We're going to go to the Natural Bridge Caverns. We're going to the Rainforest Cafe, the Riverwalk, the Whip Museum, and then we'll end our trip over at Trader's Village, and that's where Dinosaur George has his museum and gift shop. It's just going to be so much fun. It's going to be an absolute blast to go down there and meet DG. Dinosaur George, or is his name El Stinko? I'm not sure. Is that all the same person? I don't know. And you guys, plus a trip to San Antonio wouldn't be right without going to see the Alamo, which happens to be the theme for today's podcast. Now you guys, let's give a few shout outs before our dinosaur review today. A happy birthday to Burke and Beck. We went to their house over the weekend, you guys, did our prehistoric stomping green package. We had paleo. He had so many fish to eat. We dug in the sand tubs for all kinds of dinosaurs, and we learned all about prehistoric life. So happy birthday, Burke and Beck. Then congratulations, everyone, to the Indominus Rex. The Indominus Rex, you guys, the hybrid dinosaur, was named the prehistoric Royal Rumble champion. Last Sunday, six of my junior paleontologists, six of my junior dinosaur Rangers, as part of my Patreon club, we went all in to the Royal Rumble event, you guys. We had an awesome game, you guys, where 30 dinosaurs faced off in a WWE-style Royal Rumble event. In a match, once 29 other dinosaurs were thrown out of the ring, I let my junior dinosaur rangers help me vote on which dinosaurs were eliminated, thrown out of the ring, you guys. We were left with one remaining 
Flying Dinosaur, and the Indominus Rex was declared the winner. Baby! You guys, I kind of was holding out hope for a herbivore. Uh, the Pentaceratops came in right towards the end, and I thought for sure our Pentaceratops was maybe going to take the crown. But sadly, it was eliminated. Then the Triceratops came in and made it to the very last vote, you guys. But sadly, the Indominus Rex took the glory. It's still an awesome dinosaur, even though it's a hybrid. But you guys all know I'm Team Herbivore. Now, also a shout out, everybody, to Norris Elementary School, my old stomping grounds. You guys, I finally returned to my old elementary school that I went to as a kid back in 1995 to 2001. It was just an amazing experience, you guys. I had chills. I literally had chills when I told the kids that I went there 21 years ago, 22 almost. You guys, I bought a Norris Elementary t-shirt that I wore, and you guys, it was just so much fun. I cannot, uh, I'm just so thankful for that life experience to be able to return back to where I went to elementary school almost 22 years ago. And I was a lion, you guys, so lions and dinosaurs both roar. Well, you guys, let's go ahead and grab our hats, our horses, and our official scorecards because it's time to head to the Alamo for today's dinosaur review. Now, if you need official scorecard, go to my website, stumpchomproar.com, click on that science lab tab, and you'll see the post about the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast, and you'll be able to print off for free that official scorecard so you can follow along with me, see if we get the same dinosaur score, or maybe you even want to go do your own dinosaur genus or species. It's totally free. Go print off the official scorecard. Well, you guys, let's go ahead and head into the Alamo for today's dinosaur review. Here we go, all my junior paleontologists. Today we're talking about no one other than the Alamosaurus. The Alamosaurus. Now, what is the name meaning for the Alamosaurus? It's the Oho Alamo Lizard. And it's not even named after the Alamo, that old fortress down in Texas in San Antonio that I'm visiting this weekend. It's actually named after something completely different, and we'll get to that in just a few moments. But the Alamosaurus, means the Oho Alamo Lizard. Now, what dinosaur order is our Alamosaurus? So this one is a Saurischian dinosaur. Those are the lizard-hipped dinosaurs. Then it falls into that sauropod family. Those are the long-necked herbivores. They have those long necks to reach up into the trees, eating all kinds of pine needles from them conifer branches. Then our Alamosaurus falls into the titanosaurids and then the saltosaurids. So again, a saurischian, a sauropod, a titanosaurid, and then a saltosaurid for our alamosaurus. Now, how big was this sauropod? How big was this long-necked dinosaur? Its length, its height, its weight. Well, everybody, our alamosaurus is coming in at 98 feet long, or 30 meters. That is just gigantic, you guys. More than twice the size, twice the length of a T-Rex. T-Rex about 40 feet in length or Alamosaurus up to 98 feet in length or 30 meters. Then it's 26 feet high or 8 meters. And then listen to this. They can weigh up to 146 thousand pounds. Can you believe that? Can you believe a creature can weigh 146,000 pounds? You guys, our Alamosaurus is the largest known dinosaur genus from North America. That's right. That's where dinosaur ranger Anthony is at in the great state of Nebraska in North America. So the largest known dinosaur genus in North America, the Alamosaurus. And when we compare the size of our Alamosaurus against two other North American sauropods that we've reviewed on the Dinosaur Review for Kids, they're all about the same in length, plus or minus about 20 feet. Our Alamosaurus is the biggest at 98 feet long. Then our Brachiosaurus, about 85 feet long. And then our Apatosaurus, only 80 feet long. But when it comes to height, our Brachiosaurus is the tallest at 50 
50 feet high, and then our Alamosaurus is about half that at only 26 feet high, and then our Apatosaurus is even shorter at 15 feet high. So our Alamosaurus is the longest, but it's still not the tallest as our Brachiosaurus. Now you guys, how fast was this dinosaur? How quick was it? Was it a good runner? Well, probably not weighing 146,000 pounds. This sauropod probably running more about six miles per hour. And it's not even a run. They're just walking around. There's no way they could pick up any kind of gallop or any kind of stride. So they're going about six, maybe, maybe 10 miles per hour. Somewhere in their single digits for sure. They're not getting into double digits for their miles per hour. They're quadrupedal, that means they're walking on four thick legs. They have four thick column-like legs, you guys, and they have toe claws. You don't think of very many herbivores having claws, but they had all those claws on their toes, you guys, which is probably helping them have a little bit of traction as they're walking around in those sandy, dirty, rocky sediments. They're using those toe claws to kind of grip onto the ground a little bit. Now, what what weapons defense did this dinosaur have? What was its characteristics? Well, you guys, this is a very long dinosaur. The Alamosaurus is a very long sauropod, and they believe it might even have the longest neck of any of the sauropods. Can you believe that? The size of its turtleneck it had to wear at Christmas time would just be crazy. But did our sauropods wear turtlenecks? Or maybe even a necktie or maybe a bandana like dinosaur? Ranger Anthony. Well, anyway, the Alamosaurus, one of the longest necks of any sauropod. Now, the neck, you guys, was parallel with the ground. So that means, if you guys see an equal sign, how those two lines go right next to each other, they're parallel. That is going to be the ground and the Alamosaurus neck. They're parallel with each other. Our Brachiosaurus, another sauropod, their neck goes straight up into the sky. They're eating all those pine needles on top of the trees, whereas our Alamosaurus is eating more of those midline uh, branches and all those conifer bristles, you guys. So our Alamosaurus has a neck that goes straight out, whereas like a Brachiosaurus has a neck that goes straight up. So that is very interesting with our sauropods. Now their neck, you guys, like I mentioned, is kind of more straight out, so they're eating those low-lying, uh, maybe midline branches off the trees. They're herbivores. They're eating all kinds of plants, all kinds of branches from those conifer trees back during the Mesozoic era. Now, sadly, you guys, no skull has been discovered of our Alamosaurus, but we do find some teeth. Now, our sauropods either have spoon or rod or pencil-shaped teeth. So, our Alamosaurus has pencil-shaped teeth, and those pencil-shaped teeth would have been like a rake. They rake all those pine needles right off the branches, and they swallow them whole. There's no way I would swallow a salad whole. Would you guys want to eat some pine needles? You would. You want to dip them in some ranch, kind of like a carrot? Would that be good? I don't know. There still might be too much sap in those pine needles for me to eat, you guys. But maybe it'll give you a fresh evergreen breath. That would be totally amazing. And maybe even our Alamosaurus had good breath, you guys. Do you guys think dinosaurs had stinky breath or good breath from eating all those conifer bristles? Their mouth probably smells like a Christmas tree. Well, anyways, you guys, so no skull of our Alamosaurus us, but we find those pencil or rod shaped teeth. And after the Alamosaurus, or any sauropod for that matter, swallows all the vegetation, all those pine needles, they go down their long, ginormous necks, you guys, down into their gizzards, just like birds. And they swallow gastrolis. Those are rocks. And all those gastrolis, they crash and bang and boom into each other. And it helps break down all the vegetation. It helps break it down so that they can easily digest all that food in our stomachs. Us is humans, we chew our food so that helps it break it down. So it's easy for our bodies to absorb all the energy. The sauropods, they had they didn't have very good jaw muscles. So when they swallowed them, they needed those gastrolis, just like birds, to help break down all that vegetation so they can easily digest and absorb all those nutrients from those yummy salads. 
Now, something really cool about our Alamosaurus is their, their body armor, you guys. A sauropod with body armor. And that's right, they find bony armor or like osteoderms, kind of like we see on an ankylosaurid. Those osteoderms, you guys, on the back of their neck, a little bit on their back, you guys, is going to be a little bit of protection. But if you can think about it, the Alamosaurus is already 26 feet high. Why would it need protection on its back from a meat eater? because the T-Rex is only about 12 to 20 feet high. So there's no way it's going to be biting down on the back of the Alamosaurus. So would those really even be defense items? Maybe they're just more for display. Or maybe those bony armor osteoderms are going to help the youth, the juvenile Alamosaurus. So when those juveniles are a lot smaller than the adults, then those osteoderms would be perfect for those meat eaters, you guys. A little bit more needed protection. Now you guys, what else is super cool about the Alamosaurus? They have a wider chest and a stance than many of those other sauropods. Their chest is all bulked out and they're ready to go lift some weights in the gym as they have their kale smoothie or maybe a pine needle smoothie. But anyway, a wider chest and a stance, those four column-like legs and a long tail behind them. And maybe that tail could even make some kind of a whip. A whip weapon, you guys. They could scare away some of those meat eaters, scare away different creatures, or maybe even use it as a weapon to try and attack some of those carnivores that are looking for a quick snack to eat. Well, you guys, I think it would have been an awesome weapon, that whip-like tail. And they also, you guys, would have lived in a herd. So our Alamosaurus living in that herd environment is going to be great protection against all those meat eaters. And something really cool, we even find nesting grounds down in South America of sauropods where they find about 25 eggs in each nest or each clutch. So we know these sauropods are living in somewhat of a herd system and that herd is probably going to be their second best defense behind their ginormous size. Now you guys, where did this dinosaur live and how long did the Alamosaurus species live during the Mesozoic era? So something really interesting you guys sauropods. We see them in the Jurassic period. They start to go extinct, maybe even around 105 million years ago. Then they pick back up. We find fossils like of our Alamosaurus 70 to 65 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. So why is there this big gap in time? 105 to 70 million years ago. We have about a 30 year gap, a 30 million year gap between the fossils. Did aliens come down with their spaceship, take all the big sauropods away, and then decide to bring them back 30 million years later? Probably not, right? Because they would need a super big spaceship to get this 146,000 pound Alamosaurus away from our planet. Well, you guys, no one really knows. Maybe we just haven't found enough fossils yet in those formations, in those rock layers. Maybe it just came back. Could it have went extinct and then they came back three? 30 million years later, we'll never know for sure. But our Alamosaurus, 70 to 65 million years ago during that late Cretaceous period. Now, it was originally found in New Mexico in the Ojo Alamo Formation. So that is where the Alamosaurus gets its name. Not from the Alamo Fort down in Texas, but from the Ojo Alamo Formation in New Mexico. And that formation was named after the Alamo Trading Post, you guys. Back in the Old West. So you guys, it was found in June 1921, named in 1922 by Charles Gilmore, our scientist who named the Alamosaurus the Ojo Alamo Lizard. Now our Alamosaurus has also been found in Utah, Wyoming, and Texas, where I happen to be going this weekend. Super excited again. Now you guys, we also find migrating patterns of our sauropods. So sauropods we find in South South America and Asia. But how did they get to North America? Did they come up through Central America where they weren't really connected so much yet? Did they come over the Straits from Asia over into Alaska, Canada, brought their way into North America? We aren't 100% positive, but we know these sauropods would have migrated for all kinds of food. They're moving to different areas of the land looking for all kinds of vegetation to put in their bellies because they're going to 
to have to eat a lot of food every day to be able to keep themselves full. And I think they probably went extinct because they had no ranch dressing for their salads, you guys. Wouldn't that just be crazy without ranch dressing? I would just go crazy. Well, you guys, something also very, very cool. They find a juvenile Alamosaurus meters away from that KPG boundary, you guys. And what that means is the fossil specimen that they found is just a few meters away, you guys, from the KPG boundary. So the Cretaceous period ends when the asteroid strike happens and the Paleocene pe uh, period starts, you guys. So right there, there's a line where the dinosaurs went extinct. The Alamosaurus is one of the closest fossils to that line. So it might have been one of the last survivors of all the dinosaur, at least of the fossils that we find anyway. So very, very cool, you guys, are Alamosaurus, one of the largest sauropod dinosaurs, up to 98 feet long, 26 feet high, weighing 146,000 pounds, running, walking very slowly, quadrupedal four legs, you guys. They have one of the longest necks of any of the sauropods. They're the biggest genus of dinosaur of North America. They have those osteoderms on the back of their neck, on their back, you guys, those rod pencil shaped teeth. They're living in a herd and they have a wider chest stance, you guys, and that's going to give them tons of power and they even have that whip tail back there behind them. So you guys, what are we going to score on the Alamosaurus, the official results of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast? What are we going to give the Oho Alamo Lizard? Now remember, we gave the Brachiosaurus a 9.0 and we gave the Apatosaurus an 8.6. Now those two creatures, the Brachiosaurus is a little bit bigger uh, than our Alamosaurus, but then our Patosaurus is a little bit smaller. So I think we have to put the Alamosaurus right there in between those two other sauropods that we reviewed in earlier seasons. So you guys, I'm going to give our Alamosaurus an 8.0. Point eight. There we have it. Double eight for our Alamosaurus, our Alamosaurus, which happens to be the Oho Alamo lizard, receives double eights on the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. We did it all, my junior paleontologists. We made it back from the Alamo. Did you guys have tons of fun down there in the Alamo? I sure did. And what did you guys do? Did you slide down the back of the Alamosaurus? But hey, don't you remember there's all kinds of bony armor osteoderms on the back of the neck of the Alamosaurus? That would have just hurt your butts for sure. But what did everyone think? Did I give a good score for our Alamosaurus? Double eights and eight point eight on the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. We pretty much made a sauropod sandwich, you guys. A Patasaurus 8.6, Alamosaurus 8.8, and Brachiosaurus 9.0. We put the Alamosaurus, who is a little bit shorter than the Brachiosaurus, but longer than the Apatosaurus, right there in the middle of our sauropod sandwich. It is the meat of our sauropod sandwich in between those two slices is a bread in between the two buns, you guys. It would just be so good. What? You guys would eat a sauropod hamburger? How do you guys think sauropod would taste? Would it taste like cows, like a hamburger we'd eat today? Just don't forget the ketchup and mustard. But you guys, anyway, I think our Alamosaurus just secured a spot in the next prehistoric cage match. And we only have one more genus of dinosaur to review for season number six until we know for sure who will face off one on one in the next prehistoric cage match. Right now, now, if the season ended today, it would be the Alamosaurus versus the Nanooksaurus. It would be the Oho Alamo Lizard versus the Polar Bear Lizard. A dinosaur from New Mexico, a dinosaur from Alaska. It would be just totally amazing to see those dinosaurs go one-on-one. -on -one. But guess what? Somebody might be waiting to play spoiler. We have one more dinosaur genus, like I said, and I think I'm going to give you guys another little hint. 
Now, this one, you guys, our next dinosaur genus is another dinosaur that's found down in the great state of Texas, where I'm going on my vacation this weekend, down to San Antonio. And I think they even have one down at the museum down there. But let me give you guys an even another hint. Let me tell you some dinosaurs that we find down in Texas. We have the Paloxysaurus, we have the Technosaurus, we have the Acrocanthosaurus, the Pawpawsaurus, the Tenontosaurus, and the Torosaurus. Six dinosaur genus. Which one is going to be a review for next week? And I'll even give you guys an even bigger hint. The next dinosaur genus, the letter it starts with is the same letter that my name starts with. Anthony, what does Anthony start with, you guys? And that will be your final clue. But before we log off for today, let's go ahead and do our awesome prehistoric dinosaur joke. So here goes. Why would prehistoric cowboys only ride a triceratops? Let me say it again. Why would prehistoric cowboys only ride a triceratops? Why did they only ride that three-horned face? Well, you guys, it's simple, because they would just be too hard to carry. They've got to ride on them, not carry them. They're just way too heavy. And don't even get us started on the Alamosaurus, 146,000 pounds. You guys, we couldn't even pick up their tool claws without being crushed by their massive four-column-like legs. And maybe even whipped away with their tail whip, you guys. Now, that is it for today, everyone. Thank you so much again for tuning in, listening to the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. I have to go start packing my luggage. Our trip is this week on Thursday, you guys. Again, we gotta get up at 3 o'clock in the morning so that we can head down to the airport and get on our airplane. But make sure to follow me on Facebook. Just search Stump Chomp Roar and you'll be able to see all kinds of photos that I post for my trip down in San Antonio, Texas. So wish us luck. And you guys, I cannot wait to meet my dinosaur mentor, Dinosaur George. And some junior paleontologists, they even think he's the one and only El Stinko. Could he really be Extinko? El Stinko? Extinko? I'm not sure, you guys. I'll go ahead and find out for everybody. Does he really stink like El Stinko? I'm not sure. But remember, my name is Dinosaur Ranger Anthony, your Davy Crockett-like host for today's podcast, Into the Heart of the Alamo. And as always, remember, keep digging for dinosaurs. Remember the dinosaurs. Remember the dinosaurs.